This is my demo showcasing my artifact for my Agrat unit. In this, I'll be demonstrating different uses of particle systems within games. However, as particle systems can have potentially limitless applications within games, it would be impractical to try and showcase each and every use. Therefore, I've split this demo into three sections, where I will first demonstrate the different components used within particle systems, followed by some simple and widely used examples of particle systems, and then finally some more complex and unique uses of particle systems. I've made this demo in Unreal Engine and used the Niagara Particle Editor to make the different examples, as this seems to be the most open system at the moment in terms of giving artists different options when making effects, and therefore is most appropriate when demonstrating their potential. So, let's begin. So, as I said in this first room, I'm showcasing the different elements that particle systems are made from. So along this first wall here, I have an example of each of the different types of emitters that are used within particle systems. I've then created an effect using each of these emitters so you can see what they can be used for when they're used in isolation. So first up we have this sprite emitter. A sprite emitter is quite simple, it enables the user to render 2D images on the position of the particles. Um, so you can see here that I've got these little snowflakes that are falling down um, and the sprite renderer is what's letting me show these as a 2D image. Additionally I've got it set so that as the camera moves around that the particles are always facing the camera so it helps create the appearance of a 3D surface even though it is just a 2D image. Next up we have the GPU emitter and the GPU emitter is very similar to the sprite emitter however it is run on the GPU instead of the CPU which means it's able to handle a much larger number of particles in the system without having too many costs on performance. Next we have the mesh emitter and this allows the ability to represent particles as a 3D mesh instead of a 2D image. So you can see here that I've created this asteroid belt and each particle is being represented by this 3D model of a rock that has been changed and rotated in different positions. Here we have the beam emitter and this works by generating multiple particles in a line and then combining these and drawing them together to make a beam. Um, this works by defining the start and end points of the beam so you can see where it is in space and how long it's going to be and then you can represent this however you want to. Um, so you can see if I press play here that in this effect I've used the beams to create a lightning simulation. This works by randomizing the end position of the beam within this location of the display here as well as randomizing the tangents used to create the arc so that each beam that's being generated is going to a random position and a random arc so that none of them are the same. Additionally, as I mentioned when talking about the GPU emitter, when you are running particles on the CPU you can use a light renderer, which is what I've done here. So you can see that the beam is lighting up the environment as it moves around, which is helping ground this simulation in the scene and help making the particles appear more realistic. Finally we have the ribbon emitter and this is quite similar to the beam emitter however there is a slight difference so in this system I'm using two separate emitters to create this effect. The first one is a simple sprite emitter which is generating these leading particles that are being emitted from the center and then the second emitter is using the location of these leading particles and then setting that as the start location for the beam meaning that it is trailing behind it as it travels along its path. So this could be used in games if you had projectiles that are being fired and leaving trails behind them, uh, be it smoke or some sort of magical effect or something similar. Okay, so along this next wall, um, I've laid out some examples of additional features and techniques that can be used within particle systems. So the first of which is this event-driven spawn uh, simulation. So what's happening here is that particles can generate and then send out their location. So in this effect, you see these leading rockets that are being fired up. They are generating their location, which is then being used to create the trails, similarly to the ribbons that we've just seen. Um, and additionally, we can use the location to generate a death event. So when the particle reaches the end of its lifetime and it dies, uh, we can use this to trigger an event. So in this simulation, when the rocket dies, uh, we are spawning this initial burst of particles, which are then in turn generating their own location event, which is leaving behind these sparkly trails that we see here. 
So this is well suited to explosions or as we see here with fireworks. So for simulations where you're going to have different things happen at different stages, you can use these events to trigger these different stages one after the other. Okay, so next we have something called animatrails. And this is the ability to attach a particle system to the animation of a character. So here is a character that I've made previously and he will be taking the place of characters for the rest of this demonstration. So what this enables you to do is to use the momentum of the character in the animation to drive the particle system's behavior. So if I press play here, you can see that as the wings move down, leaves trails behind it. So these particles don't have any initial momentum, so their direction is being controlled by the movement of the animation itself. The only thing that's defined is the start point being linked to the wings of the character. And what I have done as well, just to help illustrate the effect, is to give the particles some initial momentum to move them backwards so that you could see how this would look if the character was in movement rather than standing in a stationary position as is being shown here. Next up, and final feature that we're showing in this room is mesh particles. And what this does is enables you to spawn particles on the surface of a mesh. So this could be a character's skeletal mesh, or it could be a stationary object static mesh. Um, so if I press play here, you can see that as the animation reaches a certain point, we are spawning particles along the surface of the mesh. And what I've done here is spawn them in a burst, so that the frame of the animation can be clearly seen within the particle's position. So, after looking at the components that make up most particle systems, this next room is looking at some of the simple and more widely used examples of particle systems in games. Each system in this next room and in the next room is utilizing different features and techniques to drive the behavior of the system to help demonstrate the variety of applications for particles. I will briefly go over the main features of the displays, however, due to the number of systems being shown, I will not be able to go into detail on how each of them work in this demonstration. So, first up, we have this dust emitter. So, this is a much more subtle effect, more used for creating atmosphere rather than wow factor. So, this would be used in like an indoor room or an attic. Uh, these particles have no gravity or velocity, they just have a slight uh, curl noise which gives them random movement so it's a much more simple effect. Next up we have this sparks emitter so this is using a combination of a burst and a continual spawn rate so that we're getting this nice continual flow and then occasionally a solid burst of sparks as if something's being struck and it's casting sparks off in the direction. Uh, these have a slight bounce in their collision so that they are hitting the ground and sparking back up and when they do hit the ground they age much faster so that the glow is reduced and it looks like they are cooling down after hitting the ground. These particles are also using a light renderer so you can see that they are lighting up the floor as they are cast down onto it and spreading about through the scene. These particles are also set to be velocity aligned meaning that they are pointing in the direction that they are traveling to help create these long stretched out uh, particles that we're seeing here. Next up we have this rain system, so this would be obviously spread out across your scene. Um, the particles are again stretched and the gravity in this system is much higher so that they fall faster. I've given them a slight blue tint to their colour and the particles that are falling down will die when they hit the ground due to collision. And this is then using an event to trigger a splash of particles which is spawning a random number between 2 and 5 on each droplet so that each drop is different than the other ones, they're not all just repeating the same animation. Next up we have this waterfall effect. So this is slightly different, this system is using a sub UV for the particles material. And what this means is that rather than using a static image for the particle, each particle is scrolling through different frames of an animation. So if I were to slow this down then you'd be able to see that the particles are spreading out as they move through the air, they're not just holding its shape. I've also scaled the particles up over time so that the base of the waterfall is wider than the beginning of it. There's again a slight blue tint to the particles and they turn to white as the water continues to fall down to show it foaming up as it would do in real life. There's a slight arc to their movement and as the particles die they then spawn this spray which is being caused along the bottom here. 
So then finally on this side of the room we have this fire system. So this one's a little bit more complex due to the amount of things happening in it. However, it's such a widely used example of particle systems that it does definitely belong in this room compared to the next. So here we have a bunch of different embers being kicked up. So we have some longer sort of licks of fire compared to the smaller embers that are rising up slowly as well. You can see they've got random movement applied to them, the same as some of the other examples I've demonstrated. And the smoke that's being generated is changing its color over time. So that when it first spawns, it has sort of an orange hue to it and then it turns into a more traditional smoke as it moves away from the source to help make the smoke look like it's being illuminated by the fire itself. We also have this faint glow around the edge of the system which is being created by particles with a very low opacity and a larger sprite size, which is then creating this sort of a hazy, orangey glow around the whole system. Okay, so next up we have this firefly system. So this is actually using a 3D mesh which I created of these fireflies. If I zoom in, you can see here. And then a section of this mesh has a mask on it to enable it to be emissive. And then this emissive color is being controlled within the particle system itself. So what's happening here is that the particles are moving in a random movement. And if they get too far away from the center, they are being pulled back in so that they stay within this localized area that I've defined. Additionally, as the light is being controlled within the system, I've used a sine wave on it, which sets the value on a percentage from 0 to 1 enabling me to set the light on the fireflies to blink in and out randomly over their lifetime to help make the particles appear less static and more lifelike. Next up we have this steam effect. Uh, so again this is using the sub UV of the smoke. You can see that the particles are actually animated rather than just holding a static image. Um, this has an initial velocity and a cone so that it's starting from a central point and spreading out over time and the particles themselves are actually growing in size as they move throughout their lifetime as well. I've also set the opacity to fade out toward the very end of the particle's lifetime so that we get this nice sort of fade as the smoke is dispersing. Next up we have this leaf fall system. So this is being generated by a curved plane with a leaf material applied to it. They're being spawned in a ring around the base of the tree so that they're matching the tree's shape but not spawning inside the trunk. These particles also have collision applied to them so that they can settle on the ground as well as some random rotation velocity so that they look like they are catching the wind as they fall down and again some initial cone noise applied to give them some random movement. The final system in this room is a simple fountain emitter. So this is run on the GPU so that we get much higher numbers of particles being spawned. These are also given a velocity from a cone so they're spawning at a central point and then spreading out over time and then I've been able to adjust these cones to give them some more interesting movement as they travel around. I've also offset their initial location so that I could then position them how I wanted to while still having them being controlled from a central emitter. Okay, so this last room is set up to showcase some of the more complex effects and some of the more unique things that particle systems can be made to do. So first up here we have this meteor effect. So what this system is showing is how you can combine the techniques used from the previous rooms and how that can create some really interesting effects when you start to use them all together. So in this system we have a mesh for the initial meteor and it has a material on it which is using an emissive map uh, combined with world displacement. So what that basically means is it's allowing me to stretch the glowing parts of the rock's material uh, back in the direction that it's coming from so that it looks like these glows are sort of moving away as it's traveling at speed through whatever atmosphere that you're having it drive through. I've also given this mesh some initial rotation and then additionally we've got some extra sparks being kicked off here with a combination of longer streaks and smaller little flakes being emitted off of it. As you can see here we have these smaller versions of the meteors that have much longer trails that are to look like fragments being ripped off the meteor as it's moving through and then sort of disintegrating as they move away. Similarly, you can see here coming out of the back, we have these slightly larger objects that are eroding away as they move over time. And this is a smaller version of the meteor again. However, this material has an eroding map on it so that over time it's showing less and less of the material um, as it moves away from its system. Similarly to the fire effect in the last room, the smoke on this system is changing color over its lifetime so that the closer it is to the initial meteor, the more of a hue the color has um, to help it look like it's being illuminated. And then we've also adapted the 
glow from the fire to go around this meteor as well to make it look like it's giving off some heat as it's moving through. Okay, so this next demonstration is showing how multiple systems can be used together to create an effect. So here we have this orbital laser that I've created. Um, you can see these beams, you've got this central beam coming down, the rest of them spawning around it, and then spinning and moving closer to the origin. And then this is sort of like representing the targeting system. And then if I press play, you can see that once this initial system has commenced, it then spawns this next explosion. So you can see what's going on in this explosion here is you've got this initial shock wave with a refraction material creating a sort of hazy effect. Um, we have the smoke and the sparks that are being kicked off slowing down over time. Um, you can see the sparks, their scale was stretched out when it's first spawned and then slowing down to sort of show the, case, the speed of the explosion a lot more. Um, we also have this sort of dark aura being created at the base and then this initial decal that's being left on the ground and then fading as the system fades away into its next loop. Okay, so next up we have this tornado effect, and this system is showcasing the ability that you can create a path for your particles to flow. So this central column here of the tornado, um, its movement is not being defined in the particle system, it's actually being defined by this spline, which I've created. And then I've set in the particle system to sample the spline and then use that to track the position of the particles. So this spline can be edited so if I were to select this point here, I could drag it to the side. And as I do that, you can see that the particle system updates with the movement of the spline. Uh, okay, so I will just undo that real quick. Um, we can see that the smoke color is changing toward the bottom where it would be kicking up dirt and that sort of thing. And then we have mesh particles representing this debris that's being kicked up here over time as well. Um, some of them more frequent and then some of them being kicked off only once every now and then. Next up we have this quite interesting effect and it's basically showcasing how you can control a particle's behavior with sort of mathematical algorithms and that sort of thing. So here I've written a custom script which is setting the particle's position, rotation and scale and then changing these over time. And you can see that each particle is slightly offset as it's basically done this by multiplying the particle's position and scale and rotation by the index that's given to it when it's spawned, so that each particle that's being spawned is slightly offset from the previous. The material also has this Q shift on it, which I'm then controlling through the system to make it cycle through over time, and then this all comes together to create this quite nice looking effect. Okay, so lastly on this side of the room we have this portal effect and this is demonstrating how the spawn point for particles can be altered throughout the system's lifetime. So here you can see that the portal is opening and closing throughout the system and this has been done by setting the initial spawn location for the particles to a cylinder and then adjusting that cylinder's radius throughout the duration of the loop. So this system is made out of multiple smoke rings, we also have this smoke trail coming down behind it which is being drawn away using a point attractor which draws the particles to its location. We then have different lightning effects being spawned within the smoke. You can also see here that as the portal opens there is smoke appearing on the ground uh, which then joins in with the rest of the system to help the system appear more grounded in the environment that it's set into. So next up we have this beetle system and this is showing how other entities that are separate from the particle system can still be used to drive the particles behavior. So this has been inspired from the recently released demo of Unreal 5 and the game that they showcased in that. And what this system enables you to do is to give these beetles some random movement and then when this ball of light is brought closer to them, you can see that they will run away from the radius of the light so that you can use the position of this beam to interact with the particles that are being created and force them to run away from the light as it moves through the scene. Okay, so next up we have this ice attack and this is basically showing how the techniques used in this room can be repurposed to create some very different complex effects. This is showing the versatility of the things that I've already used and how they can be repurposed to create this nice looking effect here. So what's happening here is that I have different meshes being spawned for the different icicles that are being generated here. Um, they are spreading up from the ground over time. You can see that they have an eroding material and as they erode these sparks are being created to show them wisping away into the atmosphere. We again have these decals being spawned on the bottom 
which are also eroding to show the ice melting over time as the spell sort of loses its effect. And then here these sort of floating particles on the side would be representative of the character's movement when summoning this attack. We also have lights spawning amongst the icicles to help give them a more magical effect so that they're glowing, um, as well as the ice chunks that are being generated as the attack moves forward and their location is being moved from the back of the system to the front over the period of the loop. It will have the mist being generated to show the ice interacting with the atmosphere around it, which is helping it again ground itself and make it appear more realistic by adding that extra detail in there. So this next effect we have this hologram texture and what this is doing is it's showcasing the ability to sample textures and then use that within your particle system. So here I'm spawning particles in a grid using an HLSL expression to define them into a square. I'm then sampling a texture of this design here that you can see which is something that I designed a while ago. And I'm then saving this position in a variable and then spawning the particles at this base plate and then transitioning from their initial location to this end position that's being stored. Um, so if I zoomed in here, you can see that this system is actually made of the particles that are being emitted from the base. And if I restart the simulation, you can see them move up from the bottom, go to exactly to where they need to be in the system, and then rest there for the rest of their lifetime. So you can see that the image slowly fades in, you can start to see more detail and it can create this really nice, interesting looking effect. Um, similarly here I've got it from a different viewpoint, so I help better demonstrate how the particles are slowing down and then spawning up into their final location. So you can get this really nice, interesting effect being created here. So when the particles are sampling the color from the texture that's being selected, the black color becomes invisible, which is why there is no background to this image. You can see it's just silhouetted here. Um, however, normally the system would still be rendering all of the particles. They would just be invisible, so it would still be spawning much more in the system than would be needed. So I wrote a script that basically looks to see the particle's color, and if the particle is not showing any color or is shown as invisible, then it is being killed. So you can see if I select this here, the particles are tightly bound to the outline of the image. There's no real extra particles being generated than is needed to help save on performance and cost because this is using quite a large number to create this effect. So this next system is very similar to the previous one. However, instead of sampling a 2D image, it is instead sampling a 3D mesh. So you can see here the particles behavior is working the same way. They're spawning at this central point and then they are transitioning over their lifetime into this final location which I've stored in a variable and the way that I've enabled this to work also allows me to do this if I press play we can now see that not only have I sampled a 3D model that I've actually sampled an animation so I can project this 3D animated model here um, the particles are storing their value and moving there over time um, so again if you slide this down you could track each individual particle's position through the time. Um, now you've got this nice little hazy sort of hologram effect being generated here. I've also set the particles to pause slightly at their initial spawn to help create this glow at the base before going to their final position. Okay, so this final system that I'm showing uh, is showcasing the kind of effect that you can create by linking particle behaviors and attributes together. So if I zoom in here, you can see that these particles have some very uh, low strength random movement so they're spinning over time and then what I've done is I've linked their color to their velocity so that the faster they move the darker the color gets and then the slower they move the lighter so you can see we got these nice scrolling effect throughout the system here so again this system is sampling a static model um, and then spawning particles along the surface of this model that's being sampled um, and this is creating a nice interesting effect. However, I've also set it so that if I press play here and I reposition this sphere, you can see that the particle scale is also linked to the location of this sphere. Um, so there's a radius that I've defined around the outside of it and the distance is being measured from the particles themselves to the center of point and the closer that they get to it, the more they scale down, the further away, the more they return to their original state. So you can see from this demonstration how particles can be used for an incredibly wide variety of different uses due to the different tools and customizations that are available for their behavior and the different ways that you can present and represent each particle. So I've tried to showcase as many of these different features as possible 
as well as showcasing a interesting and unique range of example systems that could be created for particle systems. So this has been my demonstration, thank you for watching.